Well good morning everyone, so this morning I'm armed with a list. There's 51 cows on here that I need to pull out, so we're having a bit of a draft up. I've just had a bit of breakfast, and it's actually been pretty nice this morning. I was just going to go and get the cows in, and now it's really heaving down. Doesn't look too bad out there, but it's pretty black further that way. It's coming through at the moment, so I might just take shelter for a little bit. I'm glad I sort of stayed behind. I don't really want to go out there and get wet if I don't have to, so I'll give it a few minutes and see if it passes. Hopefully it's just a passing shower. Look, and now there's blue sky up there. Really getting sick of this weather, wet weather. But I am just taking this late mom up to the shed because that's one we are drafting. I still need to get a couple of springs for this gateway here uh, and fix this. But I've just had them on the feed pad this morning because as you can see over there it's a little bit brown. Hopefully it's going to recover all right. But they have been making a mess because everything's just so waterlogged at the moment. The forecast for today though was sort of passing showers and uh, the occasional thunderstorm this afternoon. So I guess that's what went through before was just a passing shower. Dad's just going to take the front cut up. It's always easier doing that. I know it's not a very big herd but... It's always easier just taking the front up because then the rest sort of follow. Cows are in the shed but it is really good at the moment because it's really nice and warm especially when the sun comes out. Right so we're going to have a little bit of a draft up. There's 51 orange numbers on here that I need to pull out. There's about 130 cows in this herd so what I'm going to do is 51 I am going to draft back into the yard here and then the rest are just going to go down and I'll keep them in the race there until I take them probably down to the feed pad and then put them on some grass. All done, didn't take too long. Really living life on the edge, <laughs> going without a rain jacket. So I'm just going to let these girls go. They can just go back down and stand on the feed pad for a little bit. And the other herd that we drafted out to so that 51. They are going to go over to the carving cows. So what I've actually done today is that the 51 I've drafted out, they're all AI cows, and they're going to go and join the carving mob. So to date, or as of today, we are milking 120 cows. We've had 120 cows carved. So the mob, or the carving cow mob, is at about 50. So if we add another 50, there's about 100 over there. So it makes this herd smaller. From, so going from 130 down to, uh, what is it, 80 which is just a little bit easier on the paddocks and somebody said last year in one of my videos why don't you put the all the AI cows together and then at the end when you get cows that are carving that haven't had AI calves you don't sort of get them mixed up and I was like that is a brilliant idea so this year I've done it and I think it's going to work awesome had another good day on the carving front too had another 10 so seven cows and three heifers. I think we've had about two or three heifers for the last week, which has been absolutely awesome. It's good to sort of get them through. We don't really want more than three a day because otherwise it gets a little bit hard to sort of teach them in the shed. So that's probably about the sweet spot. We have got five or six before in a day and yeah, it can be a little bit annoying because they're so new. It takes a little bit of mucking around in the morning teaching that many new ones in a day. Everything's set up for these girls to go straight over onto their break. But we're just putting them in front of the carving cows, not in with them today. And then when it's hopefully a little bit finer tomorrow, we'll stick them all together. Got one of my favourite cows, she also carved number 14. Hey girl, and she had a heifer calf, so that's awesome. 322, two, two. I reckon she's going to carve in the next couple of days. She's bagging up big time. So this is what I mean, they are in this break, these are the cows we've just drafted and these are the carving cows here. So there's a new calf, oh, it's a bull calf, 273, let's have a quick look and see if there's any others. I might try and draft her out now while these are, these are eating otherwise it might be a little bit harder this afternoon. Nothing else, it's just that one calf, although there's a lot bagging up. Springing up, there's another favourite cow there, 130, she's just gone by another cow, 
She's bagging up a lot too because she wasn't like that yesterday. So hopefully she calved. Drafted her out. Just make life so much easier this afternoon. But this is the old maize paddock. We had it in maize two years ago. So this is a good crop of legion, this grass here. This is the grass I like to use and it's really good. But what's interesting is you can see a definitive line through the paddock from about here, see? It looks really nice that way. And then just through here it looks pretty average, pretty weedy. Look at that. Doesn't look too good, so what happened? Oh, actually through there, look at that, that's terrible. So what happened was that when they roller drilled it, the person uh, he dumped a heap of seed at the start and he didn't have enough to do this middle patch so it never got drilled and then they did come back in re-drill it and they must have used a real average ryegrass and it just looks terrible now so I'm probably going to have to, might spray this middle bit out at the end of the summer and direct drill the legion back into it because geez it looks absolutely shocking look at that line you can see that definitive line straight through there just shifted these girls, which is nice honey having 80 in here now. And this is that winter star that I drilled. So I have been driving through this part, that's why it looks a bit muddy. And I didn't really want to graze dry cows on here. I just didn't really want to ruin it. As you can see it's pretty black in the back. I think it's actually not as bad as it looks, but I sort of run out of grass and I didn't have much option, so I sort of had to come in here. And then, I really don't know where they're going to go tomorrow, but I've got that other paddock right there. So I'm probably going to go in there. Usually I would take them to the back and work towards the gate, but I don't think it's really going to be an option because the milking cows are just behind those trees there. Sorry, the carving cows are just behind those trees there. And then if I put them sort of on the fence and then the other ones are real close, they'll make a heck of a mess. Both mobs, if it, if it does get wet, it's nice and dry at the moment and it's not raining but I think what I'm gonna have to do is just start at the front and work my way back which isn't ideal but it is what it is I was also thinking too that because this week was gonna be real wet if I put them in here and they made a bit of a mess it wouldn't be quite so bad because this and that paddock are getting uh, plowed over into maize this year so it wouldn't be too bad I've just fenced the gateway off because I really need to gravel that short bit by the shed because it just gets so muddy but that should, uh, well, stop them going out there, otherwise they just sort of bottleneck at that gateway there and it just gets worse and worse. Just got to put up a couple more fences, but I'm losing daylight. But it was good to get that done today. I really wanted to draft them up, so that should make a big difference. So 80 in that mob, then I've got 100 in the carving mob, and I just checked before, and 33 heifers have carved. So there's only another, well, that's almost half. So there's only another 37 in that mob. And once they sort of dwindle down and they start carving, I might box them up together in about another week maybe. But like I said, we've had 120 cows carved, so we're a third of the way really, or just over a third, which is awesome. And everything's going pretty well, so I haven't had any down cows, haven't had to poll anything yet, so uh, it has been pretty easy this year. I, well, it feels like it's been pretty easy anyway. And hopefully, give it another couple of days and we should be about halfway, which is, uh, I guess, a good milestone to get to. And in my last video, we sent milk, so we sent nearly 1,500 litres, which is quite a bit for a first pickup for us. And the sale count came in at 277, so it is a little bit high. See, there's the things I was telling you about. So if you go into the red, you get a grade. Uh, you can alert if you go into that sort of yellowy brown, and then you want to be under 150 and then you get excellence for that or days of excellence you get paid a little bit more so started a little bit higher than last year but hopefully this next pickup it should drop and also pretty stoked with our first pickup too because even our second one last year I'm ahead so 145 compared to 127 and that's a day in front so things are looking good so far touch wood but it's the next day now I'm just chucking on the pallet forks, but what a buy these were. They have just been so handy. But the concrete in these holes have set enough. So what we're doing is just taking taking them all down because I'm gonna start putting that wood chip in the last couple of bays. So handy, but everything's taken off. Looks a little bit different. 
Looks good actually. Bit of a strong westerly wind today coming from in from that way, but it's probably quite good because it's going to dry a lot of out if we don't get any more of these sort of squally showers come through. But it's actually quite a nice day. There's blue sky up there and it's nice and warm. So it's time for these little girls to go outside. They can just run around here in this paddock. Just make sure everything's shut. Looks like it is. It's always a real fun time of the year. There's 24 of them in here, but they love coming out onto grass. And they're off. So I'll just leave this front of the shed open the whole time and they can just run out. And if it does rain, they can go back in. They're loving it out here, so once these calves here can drink fast enough and well enough, like once they can come to the feeder by themselves and sort of latch on, then they can come out here too. Well they're definitely having a bit of fun out here, I think it's one of the better times of the year when you let calves out, it's cool to watch them just run around. It's quite good in this paddock too because it's got a hedge down sort of that bottom side and calves don't know their boundaries so they do sort of run into things at the start. And the hedges are nice and soft and, and pretty visible, so they do stop. But I'll have to get the feeder up and going. They can come onto the trailed feeder about now. It is up at the cow shed ready to go. I just got to put some teats on it. Afternoon carving check on these girls. So we did box them up today. And they are pretty sweet. There's a little bit of fighting going on this morning. Just a little bit of push and shove between some of the cows, but they're fine now. They all look pretty settled. But just way easier. Took another five cows out this morning, so there's about 95 cows in here. And there's a calf over there. Oh, and it's heifer calf, that's good. It's at 322, so it should be close. Gotta be close. Well that didn't go through the chipper, oh, it's only a thin bit, I thought it was a big chunk. But there's probably quite a bit in this bay, probably a little bit too much, but by the time I kick it around, should be alright, that's a little bit better over there. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is probably, I don't know, swing a, I don't know, you could swing a gate down either side to make the pens, or put two bits of wood down the pole either side and then have like a bit of plywood that you can slot in there like that and then probably gonna have to bang a po post in there to uh, to where the plywood joins I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it yet but I've got heaps of time to figure out how I'm gonna divide the pens up it probably would be easier with like gates that you could sort of take off uh, just take off the hinges or whatever all those plywood ideas probably pretty easy I don't really want to put rails there that are permanent because then I, I don't know, it'd just be easier to be able to slot them in and take them out. So if you've got an easy idea or something you do that you like, let me know. So something else happened last night which is pretty hard case. I had this cow calve number 204 last night and she is in the mob that I drafted out that are not AI calves. So in the sort of later mob it says she's due to carve in 11 days time. But the calf she had was quite big and I don't think it sort of that two weeks early sort of mark. Um, or 11 day, it would have been 12 yesterday actually, but it says that it was last mated on the 17th of October and here it says there's calf BW00 which means that it's not an AI calf but if you go back 285 days it is the 17th of October the average gestation period for a cow is 283 days so from its last mating which was done by AI I would say that the calf is good although there's probably going to be a query on it on Minder, um, but I'm still going to keep it. I'll have to give my LIC agent 
agent rep field tech uh, a call and ask her and see what the go is but hopefully we're going to DNA test the whole word anyway so it doesn't really matter but I don't know I just thought that was funny but thanks for watching guys it is about knock off time so I'm going in for a bit of dinner like always give it a thumbs up that'd be awesome and apart from that see you next time